Is ragi roti blood sugar friendly? This is part 4 of a series to test the effect of different flours on my blood sugar and find the best options for PCOS and insulin resistance. Today, I am having 2 rotis made from 40 grams of ragi flour with just a little bit of ghee to isolate their impact on my glucose levels. I am tracking my blood sugar using a continuous glucose monitor, so let's check my readings after a few hours. So here's what my CGM recorded. My blood sugar rose by 83 mg per dl and took around 2 hours to normalize. With insulin resistance, my goal is to keep my post meal spike under 40 to 50 mg per dl and return to baseline within 2.5 to 3 hours. In this case, the spike was well above my target range and the rise was quite sharp and pronounced. However, when I had tested whole wheat rotis earlier, the spike was 92 mg per dl which is even higher. In comparison, Bajra roti had caused a spike of 76 mg per dl and Jawar roti had caused a spike of 71 mg per dl which are slightly better compared to this. So why did this happen? Similar to Bajra and Jawar, Ragi is also relatively high in total carbs and has a moderately high glycemic index. That means Ragi is digested and absorbed quickly leading to a sharper glucose spike. While it does contain some fibre, it doesn't seem to blunt the glucose spike enough in my case. In the coming videos, I'll continue testing my glucose readings with some other commonly used flours to compare how they impact my blood sugar. Let me know what you think in the comments below.